Welcome to the Modes Math Program. We have 20 different levels. First levels are reading graphs. Then the next uh, levels 5 to 9 are looking at tables of values and finding the rule or the equations for them. Level 9 is mixed of those. Level 10 to level 14 is graphing. Constant functions, direct variation, or proportional situations. And then you're graphing partial variations, straight lines that don't go through the origin. Then inverse variations, curves that kind of hug the x and y axes. Then you're graphing parabolas or quadratic equations. Level 15 is mixed of all those. Level 16 and on, you're graphing and being asked to find equations and being asked to find the name of the function, like what type of function it is. Let's go and have a look at some of these levels. On Wednesday, Gracie measured her distance from her house. According to the graph, at what time was Gracie 9 kilometers from home? And here we can see the origin. We don't need it. You can move the graph around. You can zoom in on different points. We're trying to find nine kilometers. Here's nine kilometers, and it looks like it's at 7.5. It looks like it's at nine minutes. Let's say I wanted to zoom in on that. Here we're going up by 0.5s. If I just click on that point with the magnifying glass on, we can see that this is in fact nine. The magnifying glass, how it works, if I double click, it zooms right out, showing us the origin. You can keep zooming out, but if you click on a point to zoom in or zoom out, it will lock that point on the screen. Here's my graph. If I wanted to zoom in, let's say at this point, it will zoom in at that point. Let's double click on that, drag it down. I can zoom in on the part where she starts. Click on that with the magnifying glass. We're zooming into that, I can zoom out on that spot as well. It locks it in place. This controls the Y scale. This controls the X scale. If you want to zoom in just on the X, you can do that without changing the Y, or you can zoom in just on the Y, or zoom out on the Y. You can move the graph around. If you double click on that, it brings the origin back to its starting spot using this tool. You can use the arrow keys to move. If you press shift, it will move five steps each time. So it's moving quite far each time you press up and down. Let's say you want it to move 100 steps. Hold down the shift and move it quickly without having to zoom in or zoom out. You put your answer here. This was nine minutes. This is a spreadsheet. You can do calculations in it. Three, five equals three times the five. Click on that. And if you change these values to four, it will change the result of the calculation just like a spreadsheet. Add all of these together by doing, uh, we have various functions up here. We have sum, floor, ceiling, and rounding. If I want to add all of those together, sum, open bracket, I'm gonna click on the four and then drag it down to the 20. Close your bracket, press enter, 29. You can do calculations in here. You can write on the screen if you need to do some pencil and paper calculations, but you don't have pencil or paper and you just wanna do the writing on the screen. You can totally do that. We have an eraser for that. If you click on, you can just drag and erase wherever you want or you can double click the eraser, it will erase everything. Level two, here you're given a situation. What was the temperature after 57 hours? You would find your 57 hours and then read it off the graph. 50, this is 60, so 57. It's gonna be somewhere around there. It's about there. It's hard to read. We're between the grids. I'm going to zoom in on that point until it's right at the grid, 55, 56, 57. This is negative 30, so this is negative 29, so it's negative 29 degrees. Negative 29 degrees Celsius and yeah, you have to put the units degrees Celsius in there, right there. Click on that and then press enter to see if you're right. If you're right, there's a short celebration. If you're wrong, there's a short celebration. It's easy to see the scale here. And by the way, it always goes to where you last click. If I wanted to center everything and I would just click on the center of the graph and then click my minus and it scales the X in that direction. Or you can click your plus and scale in that direction. Or I can do the same with the Y's. I can shrink it this way or I can stretch it that way. We have levels where you have to find the equation, levels where you have to graph. Let's do a partial variation graph. Here we have 0, 21, which is right here. That's my first point. My last point is 28, 42. 28, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 42. I don't see the 42, so I'm going to use my translation tool. Press the down arrow to move things a little faster down. Then 28, go up to 42. And if you want, you can drag this. 28 is right here, 41. 142 is there. Notice it makes the line for you. This is the line segment that you've drawn that's in green. The gray is if you extend it. Just to make sure that it's a line is just check any other point. Does it go through 12, 30, 10, 11, 12, 20, 25, 30? Yeah, it does. 
OK, and if you want, you can plot it. If I plot that as a point, 1230, right there, notice the C point, it was a C briefly, becomes a B because it's putting them in order. That's our graph. We just have to make sure now that our first point and our last point are on the screen and that they are filling up as much of the screen as possible. And it turns out that this scale is perfect. If I press minus in the X direction, it's not taking up as much space as it could. Or if I press the uh, plus in the Y direction, now it's taking up too much room in the Y direction. It's gone off the grid. Let's say we had something like this and it was a bad scale and we want to zoom in, but we don't want to have to adjust the grid so much. So I'm going to click using my translation key on the A. That locks the A. So when I press the smaller to zoom out, it doesn't move. It's locked onto the A. And then we press Enter to see if we're right. If I was graphing, these are actually parabolas. Try that with the first and last points. Negative 13, negative 86. I'm going down. Hold the shift and press the up because I'm dragging the graph up. I need to see negative 70, negative 80. I'm after negative 86. So here's negative 85. And we're at negative 13, negative 85. So click on the line drawing tool right here. My last point is negative 6, negative 51 which is right there. It looks like a straight line. All I have to do now is pick another point and see if it is a straight line. It's not. You notice that your values are going up, 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 and then they start going down, down, down. It's increasing and then decreasing. So I'm going to plot one of these middle points like negative 10, 11. I don't see negative 11. We're at negative 35, negative 30. There's my 11. Negative 10, negative 11 here. So the program tries to fit it onto a variety of different curves, and it finds that it fits on a parabola, so it's drawing the parabola for you. I want to zoom out on that. I want my parabola to be centered, so I'm just going to center the parabola on the screen. This is the highest point. It's the vertex of the parabola. I'm going to bring it to the edge, and then I'm going to click on the zoom out, clicking on that vertex. Okay, so I can see my C point, my B point, can't see the A point. I'm going to keep doing it till I do. We know the scale in the Y direction is good. I want to adjust the scale in the X direction. I want to make the graph a little bit bigger. I'm zooming in like that. That's as far as I can go. If I step one more step, the end points are off the grid. There we are. I make sure my graph is centered on the screen. There we go. We've graphed. Then you press enter to see if you're right. If you've picked a good scale and everything, it'll say you're right. But if you picked a bad scale, like let me, I'm just going to stretch it off the screen. This is a bad scale. If I press enter, it'll just say your graph's right, but your Y should be going up by fives. The Ys are going up by twos. If I scaled down, notice they're now going up by fives. It'll tell you if you've made a mistake graphing. Say I do all my points, but I make a mistake with, let's say I made a mistake with that. Let's say I picked that point. Let's get the right scale. It's not going to be right because this is the wrong spot. If I press enter, correct. It plots every one of these points. You don't have to. It shows you the proper curve. Press OK. I see the correct answer. And then you move on. The last levels, graphing and equations and everything. This looks like inverse variation as the x are going up, the y's are going down. 178. I'm using the shift and the translation key. Shift and I'm pressing down to move the graph down. So my numbers are getting higher. 178 is there. And I'm going to graph 78.1. So 78.1 is right here. So 78, 1 is right there. So it looks like a straight line, but we know it's not. I'm going to try and hit one of the ones in the middle, like 613, right there. It puts it on a curve. I would zoom out. The equation is it's inverse variation. It's y is equal to 78 divided by x. If you multiply any x and y pair, you're going to get 78. That's how you know it's inverse variation. You're going to get a constant. That constant in this case happens to be 78. The name is inverse variation. You press enter to see if you're right. That's everything you can do with the Modes of Representation math program. Have a good day.